Hello, welcome to an instructional video on how to use the ProLedger import feature to quickly and easily import a batch of bookkeeping entries into the Ledger program from any CSV spreadsheet file. Using this handy import feature will save you a lot of time and effort in making a batch of entries. For example, instead of making all your entries manually from scratch, you can import them from your online banking as a batch. Then all you have to do is quickly edit each imported entry and your bookkeeping is done. Before we start showing you how you can do this, just a few comments about the CSV spreadsheet files. A CSV file is a type of generic spreadsheet file that you get when you export entries from your online banking onto your computer. Let's show you an example of what a CSV file looks like. So when you go to your online banking and you choose the export function for any of your accounts, it'll download a file onto your computer, such as, for example, I have one here for a visa of 2014 from my online bank. And this is what you end up with, exactly this kind of file. You can widen the column. You can see, in this case, I have the year and the date of the entries. And here's a description of each entry from, my, you know, from the visa account. And here's all the values. So in this case, we have three columns of values and we can import those instead of entering them in all manually. You can do this every month. You can do it every six months. It's up to you. And you'll end up saving a lot of time and effort. And the same with your savings account or whatever other accounts you have in your online banking. Each time you export, you'll end up with one CSV file. And it'll sit on your computer like that. And you don't need Microsoft Excel or anything specific, just any generic spreadsheet program will work. And in fact, you don't even need a spreadsheet program. You just need the file and then later the uh, ledger program will just be able to import it for you. Okay, now that we have our CSV file on our computer, let's import it into our ledger program directly into our bookkeeping file. So first, you just simply click on the import button at the top. Now, you're in the import manager screen. On the left top side, you see a button that says load CSV file. So choose that. And now we simply select the CSV file that we've gotten from our online banking. So in this example, let's start with our visa entries from our online banking. So just choose the bank account for the file. And at the bottom, choose open. And now we see a fields map manager screen. And here we have three steps, step one, step two, step three. So we just simply follow through. The first step is choosing the account name of the file that you're importing. So in our example, we're importing Visa. So we simply go down and choose the Visa account. Step two, choose the date format of the CSV file being imported. Now down below, you see the file the fields that are being imported from the CSV file so you can see the imported fields section here below and the first column we have date the second column we have a description and the third column we have our numbers so step two is asking what is the date format of the file being imported so as we can see 1401 2014 well that looks like you know day month and then year and that's the format of the of the file being imported so we need to choose that here so we're going to choose make sure we choose day month and then year so that looks correct so we choose that and that way the dates will be imported properly now step three drag and drop the imported fields to the ledger fields for mapping so now we need to tell the menu ledger program what fields go where so for example on this column we just hold down our mouse and we drag it to date in this case because we want this column of data to go into our date field in the ledger program. So we now map that particular column with that particular field. Now next column, we can see that these are all descriptions. So we're gonna click down with our mouse anywhere in that column, and we're gonna drag and hold that over the word description. So now we're gonna say to the computer, this column are full of descriptions. And then for the numbers, we just simply do the same thing. We click down on that, and we're gonna say this is our totals so we're going to drag and drop that over there. So now we finish the mapping. 
So now that we've done our mapping and assigned each column to a particular field for the ledger program, we're ready to import. So we just choose at the very bottom, it says after mapping, press done to add entries into the import manager. So we're going to choose done and now it's going to load. And depending on how many entries they are, it could take a few minutes. It could take even up to three, four, five minutes if you have hundreds of entries. So you have to be a little bit patient here. Okay, so now you can see that it nicely imported everything. You know, the dates are in the date column. Uh, you know, the descriptions are in the description column. The values are in the value column. So we're all good. If you made a mistake, by the way, you can just choose X to exit out of here and reopen the bookkeeping file and try again. And so anyway, it looks everything looks good here. So the next step is we've got everything imported. Now we simply go through and you can see we still have to edit the entries. We need to classify the, each entry. And in this case, we're going to categorize each entry. So to do that, we just simply go down the list now. And you can see on the far left, there's an edit button and there's a delete button. So we can remove the entry or we can edit it. And red circle means, well, it's not quite ready for import yet because we need to finish the entry. So let's go to the far left and choose edit. And when we do that, you know, the, the edit record button screen pops up. And then we just go in basically, and what we want to do is choose our class. So let's say this is a business entry and we can choose our category. And let's say, you know, oh, I don't know. Let's just say this is a, this is a, uh, an entry for permits. And if there's a tax, we can change no tax or edit our tax value if you want, if your ledger program contains a tax field and save changes. Now you can see that that particular entry now has a green dot and it's got a check mark indicating that it's the green dot indicates that it's ready to import and by checking it there it means that it will import the next time you press submit on the bottom right. So you notice here on the bottom right hand corner it says after editing press submit to include the entries into the ledger. So once you've edited the entry we just choose submit and the entry will show up here and we're done that entry. Now when we go back to the import screen you can see now that that entry has removed itself and now we're left with on the top right hand corner you can see we still have 19 entries to go and zero are ready to go and 19 are not ready to go so it kind of gives you a tally of how things are going. And so now you just simply continue. So if we go down to another entry, okay, we have a, a gas purchase here. So it's with Visa, we know that already. So let's say it's a split entry this time, automotive, gas, and oil. Everything looks good. Press save changes, done. And we just simply continue going down, you know, until we're, we're, we're finished. So here's another one just for another example. We simply go here and this is all automotive repair and we're done. So we just continue going on like this with all the entries. And one note that I'll say is that if you have an entry, for example, uh, you could also choose the top field to say, yeah, I have a receipt for it. You would just choose the X. Or if you don't have a receipt for it, just choose that. Or if it's in foreign currency, you can go with that. But anyway, you, you don't have to use this field, but you certainly could and would help your bookkeeping workflow if you would itemize which items do not have a receipt. You can go back and, and finish those entries uh, later if you do find them. So anyway, uh, now we choose submit and we've got more entries that are completed. So anyway, this is the way it works. And at any time, uh, you can load another CSV file in here as well. And if you wanted to load multiple CSV files, you could it just slows it down a little bit because you have so many entries in one screen. So you might want to just do one month or several months at a time on one end, one bank account and then do the next bank account, whatever works for you. So anyway, after you've pressed submit and let's say you say, you say, Oh, I don't want to finish all this work on one work session. Just make sure that you press save before exiting. And we just click save. And that way, next time we open up the bookkeeping file, all the entries will stay here in the import screen. Uh, we're waiting for you to do the to work on them the next session. If you don't press save, then all the entries in the import screen will not show up the next time you open the program. Now, before we end this video, just a quick word of caution. Just to be cautious, you know, you might want to make a copy of the bookkeeping file before you choose to import a batch of entries or a larger larger batch of entries, just in case you make a mistake. And that way you're not stuck. So if your mapping goes wrong and you choose the wrong field combinations or 
something freezes during the import process, at least you haven't been dealing with your master copy of the program. So to make a copy of the bookkeeping file is very simple. You just simply find your bookkeeping file. In this case, we called it 2014 Ledger. And you can simply uh, do, do one of two things to make a copy. You can hold the control key down on your key and then just simply drag and drop. And now you got a copy. You see, I've, I've just created a copy just using drag and drop. Or you could just simply right click or control click with the Mac and choose the copy command and then control click or click and choose paste and that also makes a copy of the ledger file and that way you know you if anything goes wrong on you you can always have a backup and also for that reason I always advise if possible use something like Dropbox or Google Drive and put your files in there so that if anything goes wrong at any time with any bookkeeping file you'll be able to restore a previous version of that same file but anyway uh, that's really all there's to it I hope you found the video helpful thanks for tuning in